Hello everyone and welcome to this draw along workshop with the Library of Nature. Today we're going to be drawing a ruby tiger moth. So let's begin with a few facts about these wonderful moths. The ruby tiger doesn't just have a lovely name, it's a beautiful little moth with a brown or chestnut coloured furry body and red wings. In the UK they can look more red if they're from the south of the country and they have a browner shade if they live in the more northern areas. They begin being on the wing in April. On the wing means they start flying rather than they're a caterpillar or a pupa. They're a common day and night flying moth, so you might see one flying about in the park or in a garden. How can we help them? Ruby tiger moth numbers aren't considered to be so low that they're at risk, but many moth species in the UK have declined. So as their caterpillars eat a few different wildflowers, including dandelion, dock, ragwort and heathers, if we leave these to grow in our gardens and wild spaces, it will help them to do well. Now we can go on to drawing our ruby tiger moths. You might want to pause the video at points and you can always rewind a little bit if you want to check on something. The most important thing is that you just enjoy the process and do it at your own pace. To begin, we're going to lay the paper out so it's landscape. That means that the longest sides are at the top and the bottom rather than at the sides. Now we need to carefully fold the paper in half, trying to get the corners to match up if we can. When we open this up, it will make a center line that we can use to help us draw a picture that looks the same on one side as it does on the other. The word that we use for this is symmetrical. As we draw our moth, we're going to draw each stage on one side and the other, which will help us to keep them looking the same. If it's difficult to see your folded line, you might want to use a ruler and very gently draw a line down the middle. I'm going to use a pencil for my drawing. This is called an HB pencil, which is the common type of pencil you'll find at school or in a stationary art set. You can get all sorts of different pencils that make different marks, but the HB is great for what we're doing today. And if you don't have one, any other pencil or dark coloured pencil is just fine. Our first pencil lines are going to be sketch lines. This means we're going to make a very light mark to begin with so we can work out where we want everything to go. And then nearer the end of our drawing, we'll draw over these lines, pressing a bit harder so the lines are clearer. So to begin today, let's just practice making some very soft, gentle lines on the back of our paper. One way to do this when you're drawing a long line is to split this into lots of smaller lines like this. Now we've practiced that, let's go on to draw our ruby tiger moth. Like most insects, the ruby tiger moth has a body that splits into three. There's the head, the thorax and the abdomen. Our moth has its wings closed so we can only see the top two sections. The head and the thorax will be peeping through in this drawing. To begin we're going to draw a semicircle or an upside down U shape across our centre line, trying to get the two sides to look the same if we can. Then we're going to add this shape which looks like the bottom part of a heart, so a curve which then turns into a little point at the bottom. This is the shape of the head. Our ruby tiger moth is resting, so it has its wings pointing downwards with its four wings. These are the two wings at the top, covering most of the folded hind wings, which are the wings at the bottom. So let's draw these big shapes that are a bit like eggs, but the top don't quite join up. Start your drawing halfway down the head and finish right before that dip we drew at the bottom of the head. Now we can draw the hind wings. So the first will begin about halfway down the top wing and we want it to overlap our centre line. It isn't going to be symmetrical because tiger moss will sit with one hind wing sitting over the other. Now we can sketch in the second hind wing underneath. Our moth needs some legs to sit on. So let's draw two small shapes like long thin U shapes to make the bottom segment of the legs. 
Many insects have legs that split into three segments, and that means parts or sections. So let's draw segment two, which is like a tiny sausage. And then the last segment, which is longer and curves upwards. Now we need some antennae. So we draw these two tiny squares at the top of the head and then two long, thin, curved shapes to make each one. This can be tricky to get to match, so you might want to draw a few light lines first, like we practiced earlier, and then choose which you like best and draw again over the top. I've added some fairy lines to show the fairy body, and now I'm going to go on to do the patterns on the wings. So, to start, let's draw one section on the inside of the wing with a curved line that follows our wing shape. Now just where the head curves out of the bottom, we're gonna draw a small loop. On the side closest to the center, so we are still working near the body of our moth, we're gonna draw a line down the bottom to the edge of the wing. And another. Now let's draw a tiny little U shape next to this. One line starts in the centre of the U and the next is on the other side. We draw another of these on the opposite side of the bigger loop and two little vein lines coming off this. We now add two more thin vein lines in this last section and that's the top wings complete. Onto the hind wings, the wings underneath. We draw three lines, they don't quite meet the bottom edge of the wing and this makes it look like the wings are folded over. So one, two, three and the same on the other side. The ruby tiger moth has two large black shapes. They look a bit like squashed circles on its hind wings. We can see the whole shape of this on the top wing and less on the wing underneath. So let's sketch these in. Now let's sketch in the wing edges along the hind wings and along the fore wings. I'm going to add some other details now, I think. So I'm going to make the vein lines thicker and clearer. And I'll add some extra lines to show how furry the head and the thorax are. Now that you've finished your drawing, you can colour it in if you want to. It's completely up to you if you want to use colouring pencils, felt tip pens or crayons. You can even use paints like watercolours. Whatever medium you choose, it's best to do the darker shapes first. So colour in the black spots on the forewings and the hind wings. Tiger moss can look more red or more brown depending on part of the UK they're from, but they tend to have brighter red on their hind wings and at the bottom of their legs. And then more brown tones for the forewings. The body is brown like a chestnutty colour and you can add lines of darker brown and black to make the body look really soft and furry. The legs are black and the antenna can be left white or you can add a little bit of shading if you want to. So it can take quite some time to colour things in, so feel free to pause this for as long as you need to. 
and enjoy finishing your Ruby Tiger Moth. Well done for following this tutorial all the way through and I'm sure you've created something absolutely fabulous.